her dreams, Juliane often sees herself on the streets of a city. Shops, display windows, bargains. Everything seems normal. And then all of a sudden the faces she encounters are broken. The heads are smashed, disfigured. But strangely enough, she is not afraid. Pucallpa, a god-forsaken place in the Peruvian jungle. Right next to the airport, a monument of plaster has been erected. A crashing plane is depicted all in plaster. And from there, a dotted line follows the course of a river. An inscription explains that this was Juliana's route out of the jungle. Alas de Esperanza, Wings of Hope, is inscribed on this monument which was erected in memory of those who died in the Lanza airline crash. I see this monument now for the first time in my life, and it touches me strangely, considering that I emerged as the sole embodiment of hope, whereas all the others remained without hope in this disaster. Here, on the side of the monument, a plaque has been mounted with a highly emotional inscription which reads Brethren, we are united here through our longing to reach the warmth of the sacred hearth of home. Christmas 1971, we were on our way thither, but instead we were cast into dark eternity. Auf der Rückseite sind eine ganze Reihe von Gräbern angebracht in den traditionellen Back here there is a row of graves in the form of traditional niches in which the dead lay buried. Quite a few names of very young people catch my eye. Some of them children, others barely 20 years old. Some of them are even represented by photographs. Here young woman Further on, a young man, barely 18 years old. All in all, over 60 of those stricken by the disaster lay buried here. On Christmas Eve, all higher-ranking officers had left the garrison of Pucallpa and had returned to their families in Lima. Quite unexpectedly, I found myself burdened with the enormous responsibility of leading the search for the missing aircraft. It was a dramatic and heart-wrenching experience when we arrived at the site of the disaster. We found the widespread fragments of the wreckage and there we saw trees hung with the belongings of the travelers. Suitcases had opened in mid-air, and the presents hung in the branches as if these were Christmas trees decorated for a sad holy night, as if they were adorned for the relatives of all those who never came home. A somber destiny, I think, had been preordained for this Christmas, and the tree stood as a funeral rite for those who had perished. Lima, Peru, 
the airport inaugurated only a few months before the disaster. The departure hall for domestic flights. Everyone knows the experience, checking in at one of the counters, the most normal thing in the world. This is a film that lay dormant in me for many years because I myself had almost been part of this very catastrophe. Like anyone else, I was not out for adventure, war or self-imposed dangers. Juliane Köpke, you have asked me to address you by your maiden name because of your expressed desire to maintain a certain amount of anonymity in your life at present. Under your maiden name you have become world famous. You were 17 years old then. 27 years ago we must have met here at these very counters. It was Christmas Eve day. Both of us were booked on the same plane. I was about to start shooting my film Agiri the Wrath of God. The story is about Spanish conquistadors in the jungle searching for El Dorado. Only later would I learn that we were fighting our way through the jungle, just a few rivers away from Juliane as she, during these very same days, was fighting for her life. I remember that we started the day with mixed feelings. On the one hand, we were glad we had managed to get this flight. On the other, we were worried and anxious because Lanza had such a bad reputation after two previous crashes. And yet, we were eager to return quickly to the jungle, so we could celebrate Christmas at the ecological station my parents had founded deep in the rainforest of Peru. At the very least, we wanted to spend New Year's there with my father. But as I had just graduated from high school, I didn't want to miss the prom, which was planned for the 23rd of December, since this marked the end of a phase of my life. All around here there was a crush of passengers. At some point I must have elbowed you aside. I managed somehow to put a $20 bill onto the counter and the agent winked at me and she said, you are on, you are all on. Then at 11 a.m. there was an abrupt announcement that my flight had been summarily cancelled. You see, after their crashes, Lanza had only one single plane left, which flew Lima, Cusco into the mountains and back. And then a second flight into the jungle followed. But the plane lay over in repair for an ominously long time. In the end, there was only time for one flight, and so only Julianis would take off on schedule. I remember the jubilation of that thick throng of passengers. We 92 are the lucky ones who will make it home for Christmas. You probably remember that. Yes, everyone was overjoyed to be allowed to board and celebrate the holidays with their families. There was only one question. Would Juliani be prepared to repeat all the stations of her odyssey with us? Do you dare? Do you really want this? Well, what choice do I have after I have basically consented and come this far already? I think it is very important to have my husband along to give me moral support. This time, however, we flew Aero Peru. Row 19, seat F, the window seat, the same as 27 years ago. Nun, wenn ich ehrlich bin, ich fühle mich ziemlich nervös und angespannt. Well, to be honest, I feel pretty nervous and tense. To sit in the same seat as 27 years ago, memories surge up and they are not very pleasant. Since then, I have lost confidence in pilots and airplanes. I listen for every noise, and especially on a flight over mountains, because of the frequent turbulence. At that time, the route also led across the Andes. On the eastern slopes begins the Amazon Basin. Here, thunderstorms frequently gather. 